So, hi, my name is Andrew. I'm building a 12 and a half meter catamaran. Um, and I just want to do a quick summary video of all the materials that I've been using to build it. It's a bit um, of materials that maybe people aren't so familiar with, especially if you don't really know much about boat building or you maybe are more used to wooden boats or steel boats. But I've been building this boat out of um, fiberglass um, composite panels um, with PVC foam core. Um, so that's that green color you see. And uh, yeah, I'll just give you a quick summary of all the materials I use and how I use them and mix them together. Here's the first one. It's probably the one that you see is like the most prevalent or the most visible. And this is this PVC foam. And it's a bit of an unusual, you might think, why would you want to build a boat out of foam? Um, that's because the foam is uh, only one part of the material like, like it's put in the end. It's part of this composite panel. Um, so yeah, this is 80 kilograms per meter cube density. Um, most of it's 15 millimeters uh, wide core, but some, some parts have a bit of a thicker core section, which adds stiffness. Um, yeah, I actually ordered this in bulk from China when I started because it's pretty expensive if you order from the name brand uh, foam people, uh, like uh, Airx or something like that. Um, so yeah, uh, and this is what I cut out in the CNC machine and then um, that's what I put in with the next material, which are fiberglass and epoxy. Uh, next up, we basically have various types of um, cloth reinforcements um, that we add. So here we have two different kinds of fiberglass. This kind here, if you can see, is called a binaxial. So that's because it has one layer here that runs all the, all the fibers run in this direction, and then another layer where the fibers run 90 degrees to it. Um, and then, so yeah, there's this one, and then we also have this unidirectional. Um, so here you can see all the fibers run in, in one direction. Um, so why I have two different kinds? Oh, well, there's just different kinds for different purposes and different load paths on the boat. Um, so this is really good because it's just really strong in every direction because it's got the two um, cloths running, you know, counter to each other. Um, or this is really good if you had, know the load is coming from one particular direction because it's reinforced all along. So this is kind of like how you have a wood. You have the grain running in all one direction. That's kind of what you have here. Or this is kind of like a plywood um, where you have grains overlapping in different directions. So it's stronger in different directions, but not as strong as this one is in the one direction. So here's an example of where we have the unidirectional cloth on the boat. Um, and so this basically along the, along the bridge deck here in the transverse direction, we want to basically reinforce in the straight, straight in this direction. So we added a bunch of unidirectional layers um, to make it nice and strong in this direction. But it doesn't add that much strength in this direction. Um, so that's the idea of it. And so the bi-directional makes up like the majority of the panels. Like this whole area is just bi-directional because this, you know, will have different loads in different places. Um, or like, for example, this whole floor is also bi-directional. So here we have some carbon fiber and that's really good because um, it's really strong. So for the same weight of, for the same amount as you put on for the fiberglass, um, yeah, it's two to three times as strong. Um, here we actually have a unidirectional carbon fiber as well, but we also do bi-axial. Uh, and the only downside is it's much more expensive than fiberglass. So that's why the whole boat is made out of it. So I did, it would be a much lighter boat, but uh, I don't have that much money. So here's an example of where we have a really high load area. So we chose to use carbon fiber, and this is also the unidirectional carbon fiber. And these are the chain plates. So this is where, this is where the mast is supported from. Um, and so that's why it's a high load. And so basically what we need to understand is first how much load is going to be on that. And that we can figure out using this ISO 12215 standard, tells you how much load is going to be on these chain plates. And then you build in a safety factor, so you multiply that load by two or three, um, just so you know that you're way over the limit. Um, and then that's, that's how you know, okay, this is how much carbon fiber I need to add so it can support this much weight. Um, so that's the idea. That's just like a general panel where it doesn't have load from one specific direction. You use that bi-directional, uh, bi-axial, you call it, um, so it's strong in all directions. What we have here is basically like a finished panel. Um, so what we, that's basically this, is incorporating all the materials we talked about. So we have the core, and then we have on the outer, outer side two layers of fiberglass, and one on each side that makes the sandwich panel, and then that gets impregnated with epoxy, um, and then sucked together under a vacuum, so everything's perfectly bonded together. Um, and so that makes this really light and stiff and strong, really strong structure. You know, it doesn't bend at all. And that the reason that is, is basically we have this core and then we have the two skins. And when you try to bend it, uh, one of the skins gets put in, um, it's put in compression and the other one gets put under tension. 
and that makes it really hard to bend. It's kind of like an I-beam in principle. So it's really light, it's a really light, but very strong structure, um, which is really good for a performance catamaran, which is what we have here. Why do you need foam? So the foam is really just a core material um, to separate the skins of fiberglass. Um, so it could be anything. Some people use balsa wood. Um, some people use a honeycomb. So that's like even lighter version of the core. Um, but it's basically just some kind of uh, some kind of material to separate the skins of the fiberglass to make it uh, strong. We also have this peel ply material, and that's really good because you put it on and then you take it off, so it's a sacrificial layer. Uh, but that leaves this really nice finish, which is actually a little bit rough, so you can bond more stuff to it. The epoxy really likes to stick to it, whereas you can see here there is no peel ply and it's a bit it's a bit shiny, and that's uh, the epoxy doesn't really like to stick to. So that's what we use the peel ply for. We have epoxy. This epoxy always comes in two parts. We have the resin part. Um, and then the next part is the hardener part. So you mix these up. We always mix them up by weight uh, to exactly the right ratio using a scale. Uh, and then that's what, when you mix them up, that causes the chemical reaction. So they turn from a liquid to a, to a solid. Um, and so basically we had different kinds of epoxy. So this is, um, this is the standard epoxy from uh, RG, RG, R-G uh, punk DE you want to go to their website um, and this is a really nice like standard uh, resin for hand la laminating um, it's got a bit it's a bit thicker um, which sticks really well whereas we have this other one from HP textiles this is like a really low viscosity resin and this is really good for doing like a vacuum infusion or like bonding things under vacuum because it wets out a bit easier and faster uh, it wets out a bit easier and faster and uh, then under the vacuum that holds everything together well um, so we use different ones for different purposes. We also add different fillers. So uh, hold your breath because this stuff is pretty toxic. We want to go, but this is a uh, this <gasps> is a uh, colloidal silica powder, um, and that you add to make it make it a bit thicker, so you can do like a fillet or something like that, um, like a nice round rounded portion, or if you have a bit of a gap, it's really good for that purpose. So this is basically how we mix the epoxy together. First of all, we always use a scale. Um, and so basically you just need to go in a certain ratio. Or ratio. So for every 10 parts of this, we need three parts of this. Or four parts of this one, actually, with this one. It's three parts with the HP Textiles resin, but with this one, it's four. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and mix up 80 grams. Uh, so it's by weight, so 80 grams of this one. Here we go. So this is the hardener. That's 64. 79, 80, 83, close enough. We need 200 grams of the resin. 80 grams of hardener, 200 grams of resin. This one. 200, 220, so we're a little bit over on both, but that's okay. Mix it together really well, so we combine it. We mix, 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 mix. And we can see, because it's quite cold out, it is kind of thick already. Um, so if it were 20 degrees Celsius out, we'd have only 20 minutes of time before it became hot. And uh, one, one thick piece, uh, but because it's only, what, 10 degrees today, we'll have a bit more time. Now we're gonna mix up some thick epoxy. Um, so it's the same procedure we do further. Um, it doesn't need so much, huh? So maybe, maybe just 100 grams. Um, so first we're gonna mix same procedure as we first do hardener. So I'll do 40 grams of hardener. Yeah, so like between the two panels, there's a little bit of a gap and we're filling it in with this thickened uh, epoxy. If you put regular epoxy, the viscosity of the liquid is, you know, it would just fall out. So we thicken it up with some particles, um, some filler basically. It's more like the consistency of peanut butter. And then you, we're gonna lay it right now, I guess, onto the, the panels itself, we're gonna lay the fiberglass from the bottom. Okay, so this is how we mix them together. First of all, we wear a mask because it's pretty toxic if you breathe it in. So basically we pour this white powder in. So basically you can see now we have a nice thick peanut buttery consistency if it even kind of folds there. So that'll be good for filling any gaps. So one thing that I really, is really nice is I have a 3D printer at home and that I can use to do anything like make these consumable plastic parts. So this is what I use to mix and then I also do the fillets. So like one of these fillets, you can do with the end here. But once they get epoxy on them, they, uh, they kind of, you can clean them off and eventually they go bad. So it's nice to just be able to 3D print these at home. 
I can have a whole bunch of them without costing me very much money at all. So that's good, get a 3D printer. <laughs> so here's another material that I don't use as often, but here's a bit, bit where I used um, Western red cedar as a core material, and then lots of layers of, fiber, of carbon fiber on the, this is unidirectional carbon fiber on the outside, to make a really big thick beam um, to help support the bridge deck from underneath. So this one's even extra thick, um, because it's, the mass will sit on top of this in the middle, and that's what helps spread the load across the whole length of the bridge deck. And then we just have some other supports here just to help make it a bit sicker, stiffer when you're walking on it as well. Um, so yeah, this is what makes up for the unidirectional strips running this way, transversely. And then we have these big beams running this way. We end up with a nice, strong and stiff bridge deck, which is still nice and light as well. Yeah, that was a summary of all the materials I've been using on this 12 and a half meter catamaran project. I uh, hope that was interesting. If you have any questions or comments on the materials I've used, just definitely leave them and I'll try to answer them as best I can. And uh, yeah, follow along and see how it goes because we still have a lot of more work to do.